The following footage is brought to you by WouldYouKindly.com. <laughs> War is hell. The same can be said for video games. We all like to think we're the best of the best. Yeah, you may think you're so legit because you prestige for the 10th time in Call of Duty. You may think yourself as Billy Badass because of that third Lord rank in your ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I got news for you. You ain't shit to survive you in Squadron on the SNES. It's a game I'm still battling to this day. And on this episode of The Game Machine, we'll take a look at one of the toughest, most hardcore shmups by Capcom. Bullet hell shmups be damned. As The Game Machine starts now. UN Squadron is based off the manga known as Area 88, and in Japan, this game is known as Area 88. The game doesn't bring up the story whatsoever, so I definitely recommend you check out the manga or the anime to find out more about the characters in the series. Trust me, it's really good. In the US version, the only thing that has changed was the title. The characters you choose from and their likenesses remain in the game, so if you're already a fan of Area 88, no need to dig up the Japanese version, it's pretty much the same here. This game may not be top of the line anymore, but it still looks really great. Stages are varied and have some life of their own. In the first air stage, you can see the sky moving and you can see lightning going on in the background. Enemies all look great and expect some huge and unique boss fights. You will be fighting stealth jets, tank-like aircraft carriers, and humongous bases. Yes, even buildings are trying to kill you in this game. Even in the introduction before you start, the game looks really cool and really puts that SNES Mode 7 technology to good use. Add to that, Epic Feel is an epic soundtrack, and don't be surprised if you get a few of those tunes stuck in your head. From the start, you pick one of three characters, Shin, Mickey, or Greg. Each one has their own special abilities. Shin, who is able to level up his firepower with the least amount of power-ups you collect. Mickey has stronger secondary weapons, and Greg can recover from a beating the quickest. That's right, in this game, if you get hit once, you don't actually die. You actually still have a health bar, but it doesn't work like a normal health bar. Kind of think of it like the shields in Halo. When you take a damage and it depletes, you're vulnerable till it recharges. And when it recharges, it will only refill to what remaining health you have left. And if you get hit while you're recharging, you're screwed. Another thing UN Squadron takes from the anime is that you have to buy your own aircraft and power-ups. You gain money by taking down enemies and completing missions. This is one of the main appeals of the game and sets it apart from the others of its time. Each ship can level up by collecting power-ups from when you kill enemies and use secondary weapons and other unique features. Take the Tiger Shark for example. It's really great for maneuvering and allows you to use the Phoenix homing missiles. And another favorite of mine is the Thunderbolt which can shoot in front and downwards for those pesky bottom dwellers. And use some sweet, sweet Nate Pond to set things on fire. Now where is that marshmallow and stick when I need it? The one thing you need to know about UN Squadron that it's hard as hell, but fun to play. It's like being mugged in a back alley, except a lot more fun and less chances of getting stabbed. UN Squadron throws a lot at you, and you need to be able to shoot and dodge your way to victory. Trust me, you will die a lot, even with three continues and three lives. You will need all the help you can get. I still have not been able to finish this game, and I've been playing it on easy. That tells you how hard this game is, or how much I suck, one of the two. Even the difficulty factor is set to super rape. The controls are tight and responsive, so if you lose, it's because of your lack of skill. Also, other secondary weapons you can buy make this game much easier to go through, 
and if anyone can play this game without buying a single power-up, I would be very surprised. Also, hidden power-ups such as health refills, shields, and even a nuke everything on screen item makes going through this game a little less painful. If difficulty isn't a flaw to you, there are a few small ones. Such as, if there are too many enemies on the screen, it will suffer a big slowdown. Another feature that is sadly missing from it compared to the arcade version is co-op play. That would have made this an excellent addition to this game. Also, there are no password or save features in this game, and the only cheat code for this game is to give you a harder difficulty. That's right, a cheat code that makes the game harder. Okay, first you make this game harder, and then you don't give me my Mega Man X and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You assholes. You and the Squadron sadly never got a real sequel or a re-release on the Virtual Console. Luckily, you can find this game for less than 10 bucks. While I've carried on about UN Squadron's difficulty factor, I can't emphasize enough how much fun I've had playing this game. When you fight a tough boss and you've been stuck on it forever, or a stage that's really whooping you, there's something you rarely get anymore. A sense of achievement. No, 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 not achievement points. Real achievement. You know, like you actually did something. So. Put on those aviators and suit up and go play some UN Squadron. Those eight-year-olds on Call of Duty will still be there when you return. Till next time, game on.